Hey you guys, it's Leanne with Paper Heart Scissors and I got one of the new Hero Arts Monthly kits um, and it is the November kit and it really had this awesome, <laughs> all these little terrarium parts and pieces, a little gnome, a little um, frog, a snail, all these great things that you could put inside of these glass bubbles. And I thought that actually what would be really cool was to make a little spinner card um, with that larger circle that would almost look like an ornament. Um, so I decided to do something that was Copic color. And what you'll need to make this card are you cut two circles of white cardstock um, with the die. Uh, and I actually trimmed the top off because I wanted to use one of the other little um, tops there that I just pointed to. And then I also, um, I did this card two ways. And I actually cut uh, two pieces of acetate to put over it on at the end on one of them and then in the other one I just actually used um, uh, just I just colored it and layered it and I used glossy accents and some um, uh, Winka Stella. Anyway um, here you can see I cut little masks out of post-it tape and I started my stamping and what you're looking at is on the left hand side that would be the front and I just I cut a mask and then I reversed the um, the uh, sides so that it looked like the back of it but I could have different things in the front so I'm using that one there and then literally I'm just gonna place the mask over on top it's not the sticky side down but it will still work uh, and just I don't, I'm not going to actually mask out that front image um, on this one. So I did a lot of really deep masking on the other example. And with this one, I was going to die cut all the little pieces out and put them on top. So you can go um, as, as deep as you want with the masking. Uh, and like one of the cards that I showed you has the little, whatever you want to have in front, you need to have masks for. So you can make it as complicated or as simple as you want. And I'm taking some Copic markers and I will put the colors of the markers in the supplies. But I really just chose, and you can use really whatever you have, I just chose a light green, a sage, kind of sage color green, a darker sage green, and a pink because those cactuses have um, a uh, very light so you can see a very light pink kind of shade embedded and I started out coloring very light put all my light colors in first that's how how I learned how to cope with color and then adding shadow as I go so just kind of selectively choosing this and I um, sped up this whole video because it is um, longer it's about twice as long as what I usually make but it, there were a lot of parts and pieces to getting this right. So I wanted to be able to show you the coloring. Um, this is what's just one shade darker than that very lightest color. And this is a darker olive, um, same one. And actually my marker was bleeding a little bit here. So you can see that it got a, a lot right there in the corner. But that's okay because I'm going to cover it. And I thought maybe it was... Uh, terrible mistake but actually I used uh, I went back with the lighter color used the other end to kind of pick some of it up and spread it around and it worked out just fine and if you and if because I'm putting um, other elements over on top um, I didn't have to worry about that so luckily I didn't ruin my project um, but you can see that I'm turning the pen over because I don't know if I broke the marker but it's actually leaving it's leaking too much fluid into that tip end. Um, so I started using the other side and just being very careful with it. Um, back to going over it with the lighter color and kind of using that light color to blend in the dark again. Adding that beautiful pink shade. And you can see with these, you know, because they're plants and they're cactus, it's really fun to color because you don't have to be a, a perfect color. 
Okay, so I stamped, um, I put all of the little stamps on one block and I've stamped them all a few times in the Memento ink so that we can use Copic markers with them. And I'm going to color them up. Um, and actually I had to go back in and add, um, I think uh, five more of the little tops because I needed eight total um, for two on the top and two on the bottom of each card. So what I did was actually color those and then um, add glossy accents on top of them to make them look very much like they were actually holding it together. They also allow you to actually put adhesive on the, um, on the acetate to make them shiner, shiny because you can put the adhesive behind the top so nobody sees that on acetate. And then for the butterflies, you're going to need two for each card that you make because you're going to have them that sits up above the cactus and you're going to want to have one on the back as well as on the front as if it was flying up above your cactuses in your mini terrarium. Um, so I used a pretty singular color with the little gnomes coat and hat, the reds. I didn't add a lot of shadow. Um, I just really wanted to keep the coloring pretty simple on these and use just no more than a couple of colors. Um, the boots, I added a little bit of shadow with the shading and then I wanted these tops to feel like they were verdigris or copper you know, that had kind of aged and it was that pretty green blue. So I used um, very get this very light green, same one, and then added a teal color on top. And this little cacti was for the front of the card. And again, just those same colors, the light, light green, the light sage green, and that pretty, um, very um, pale pink. Uh, it's almost like a tea rose color. And then this is why I stamped those all together um, repeatedly with one stamp because it allows me to die cut them all at one time um, and not have to run uh, it through the, um, the press, uh, you know, let's see, if we multiplied it this way, I'm doing it three times instead of doing it. Um, uh, 12 times if I'm cutting out four things or more. So it just makes it easier to get all those little guys cut out. And um, I just use post-it tape. I find that it works really well and um, it doesn't stick too badly to uh, anything. I've tried a lot of different things and I think that that's kind of the, it's the best for me for um, the machine that I use. So I'm actually just gluing these on this one. Um, in the other version that I did, I did more masking. And this was a little bit faster uh, than masking at all. But either way, it's nice. It just kind of depends what kind of look you want. Um, because I had masked them on the other card, I actually didn't like the die cut white edges around, around the little um, gnome and his. So I fussy cut those much tighter and I kind of took a lot of the white you can see off and really cut it right up to the edge um, but it just it doesn't really matter I mean whatever's the easiest to get this the way that you like it both work but these are really really sweet and small so I actually just cut that off the tail and I didn't do anything to the butterflies because they're white sitting on white so it didn't really seem to matter I used a black gel pen to kind of fill in the stones and create some smaller ones and some little dots which adds a lot of detail uh, and you know and makes it feel like you, you, they can conform to the shape even a little bit better and then I'm going to color those in as well with uh, about three different markers so uh, the dark brown from the little mushroom house and the light brown and then a very light tan um, that I used on the snail as well. So I will go ahead and finish those up and just doing this randomly and having some fun with it is really important. Like there's no rhyme or reason. Um, 
I do tend to try to stick to the rule of uneven numbers when coloring things or adding um, elements uh, that draw the eye. So just fill in until it feels right to you, especially with something like sand. And then I ran the lightest color on top and kind of around of some of the objects that were sitting on top of it. And it really just brings everything together and makes them look like they're incorporated into the scene. And then on this one, um, I did a lot of the masking on the other one, and I didn't want to color around the outside of the um, of them. And this one I did. So you'll notice in the final, when you look at the final two cards, it's kind of up to you. I couldn't decide whether I like that or not. I, I, I do and I don't. Uh, but there's two options for that as well. So I went to go tape this together, and then I'm like, oh, right, I have to put the string in the center. So I added a little more tape and I added some twine here and just put that really right up the middle. And um, I add a big piece of tape in the center too because you want this to be really tight and you're going to pull on it. Um, so really getting that to be very secure in the center is kind of the key to that. And then I'm going to show you here that I added the adhesive to um, acetate and just put it basically right where I knew that ornament was going to sit on top. That butterfly was a little high, so I moved him down. And then I punched the holes out of the top of the little ornaments there and taped that down and brought the um, twine through the middle and then pasted the other one on top. So now it really looks like it's sitting kind of in between and when I put it on the bottom, you can see how it's spinny it's going to be. So I did that, and then I um, had cut a piece of pattern paper with a circle cutter and really securely tied down that, uh, taped those strings, that twine down. And you can see that it spins nicely. And then overlaid um, a circle cut uh, to the same dimension on top. And I'll tell you, I use an EK Success uh, circle cutter. If you had a, I think, a three inch um, punch, you could use that. Uh, and then I added glossy accents to some of the um, different elements. And there you go. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Visit me more at paperheartscissors.com and have a great day. Bye bye.